With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050. It's the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry alongside Tennessee Tech head coach Marcus Satterfield. I'm your host, Dylan Lozano. Football finally here. That's right. The Golden Eagles played a real live regular season contest. Tennessee Tech had their season opener this past Thursday night. Did lose to a very good nationally ranked Western Illinois team. So the Golden Eagles will set their sights for three straight away from Cookville. Tech will have their first Saturday contest of the season this Saturday evening. They'll be down in Georgia to take on Kennesaw State. It will begin at 6 o'clock local time here in Cookville and, of course, 7 Eastern. As always, we will talk about that matchup with the Owls a little bit later on in the show. Coach will break it down as part of this week's opponent segment. First things first, though, we'll talk about Thursday night and coach a very good, like we said, nationally ranked Western Illinois team. Yeah, that was that was probably the best team we've played since we've been here. And uh, knew going into it, very well coached. Uh, you know, I've, I've not been shy about how much respect I have for Coach Fisher and Coach Malone, who was, you know, the coach here at one point. They uh, outcoached us, and, and their kids really beat us at our game. We wanted to be the physical team, the bullies, you know, and they really, like, they didn't just beat us on the scoreboard. They physically wore us out the other night and hopefully we can take it you know any adversity you get you, you've got to get better and learn your lesson from it. hopefully we take it and it turns out to be a positive for us moving forward well when we do have a game and as we did this past week we get ready to take a look at the highlights so coach you ready to go look at the film i think so all right let's do it introducing the game <laughs> highlights and that is brought to you by wendy's of cook film <laughs> Well, as always, Coach, I know just the second year here as a head coach at Tennessee Tech, but any time you get ready for the season opener, I know that's pretty special. Get things started again. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, it was a long camp, a long offseason. It was good to get back on the field. First opportunity for Western Illinois now, preseason All-Missouri Valley Conference. Steve McShane, that's a six-yard loss on one of his first attempts of the ball game. Early on, you guys seemed to bottle McShane up. I know a lot of hype surrounding him. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we knew all about him, didn't know about the other kid that came in, the, the Burkhead kid, you know, as we were calling him. Our guys were running to the football early and making some plays. Redshirt freshman Andre Sale, that pass. Darius Stafford, the first reception of his Golden Eagle career. That's a nice pitch and catch right there. That was huge. And, and, and you know, Andre's doing a really good job. This is his first time ever getting to you know, play college football, and he handled it well. A little bit of pressure here on the next drive by Western Illinois. It's still scoreless. That a third down completion. Max Norris, the guy that Coach was just talking about, that one for 10 yards. Another third down play. This one the longest reception made by McShane, 23 yards and deep into Golden Eagle territory. Yeah, you just you know and do your job. And, and both those last two completions there were uh, results of guys not doing and knowing their assignment and executing their assignment. Results in a Sam Crosa field goal, so we have a score. It is Western Illinois, 3 nothing as we go to the second quarter. Let's take it from the top, the very first play of the period. You're looking at a third down right here. Eric Fadahunsi, one of the best names on the team, one of the best plays in the first half, a big-time hit coach to make them punt. Yeah, we talk about pulling our trigger, diagnose the play, and he did a nice job there. So we saw Andre Sale, now we see Hayden Reddick for the first time. This reception goes 17 yards, collecting a first down to Andrew Goldsmith. So the Golden Eagles starting to do some nice things offensively, but tough right here with a sack. Not much that Reddick could have done with Kalen Saunders breathing down his neck. Yeah, that guy's a good player. Plus, when you don't block him, he makes him an even better player. Golden Eagles forced to punt. You see Yeedy Thainrat is stopped right there. So we pick it up the next Western Illinois drive. Sean McGuire completes one on the run, 13 yards to Jalen Acklin. Had five receptions, led everyone in the contest. It would be a third down, though, and this pass almost intercepted. Think he would have had reservations for six. Uh, I think so. That would have been nice, but nevertheless, it was, it was a pass breakup, which we needed at that time. Still 3 nothing is the score here late in the first half. It's Jalen Acklin. We saw him a reception. He goes end around to the left. A few plays later, end around to the right with Ratkovich rushing for 12 down to the 10-yard line. 
Earlier, we saw Saunders with a sack. Now they bring him in third and goal from the one. He scores first touchdown of the game. Yeah, he's a beast. I mean, we knew he was a good player, preseason, all-conference uh, type guy, but he was, he was more than advertised. At this point, 10 nothing. How do the Golden Eagles respond? Very next drive. They do so quite nicely. On a third and six, Andre Sale, 14 yards to Andrew Goldsmith. And now, Coach, trickery on a punt, fourth down. Yeah, and a couple blocks away there from that being a really big play, but nice job by Alex getting the physical, you know, physical yards there for the first. Late in the first half, Tech driving to try to set something up. After a spike there on second and 10, a great catch, a little bit of a juggle, but but Darius Stafford gives the Golden Eagles an opportunity at a field goal. Tennessee Tech right before would call a timeout here from 41 yards out. Nick Madonia, it will go wide, and that the final play of the first half. Yeah, that would have been huge right before that happened. I was, I was shocked that, you know, that Nick missed that field goal, but that was his first one of the year. And, and like last year, he missed one early, and then he rattled off 100 straight. So he'll be fine. We have all the confidence in the world in him. And, Again, we did some nice things there right before the half from a situational standpoint to get in a position to score points. We just had to execute it. And we saw Western Illinois and some of the things that they brought to the table offensively. At this point, obviously the missed field goal, but you guys are sitting at 10 nothing, and it seemed like the defense did a lot of nice things. Yeah, I, I thought the defense was playing hard, uh, which is what we, you know, it's all we can ask, for, especially with a new opponent that we've never played before. Uh, they were making some plays, but, you know, we, I was proud of our coaches and our demeanor at halftime. I thought we made adjustments. We had a nice plan coming back out. I mean, that was the first time our offensive coaches have seen that defense. Like, we hadn't, we hadn't even watched their defense because the guy had never been a coordinator before. So they made some nice adjustments, and uh, we just have to move forward now. Uh, we'll watch it here in the second half. We have to just get a little bit better at executing it now. So a 10 nothing game, let's pick it up into the third quarter here at Tucker Stadium. The Golden Eagles, after starting with the football first, Tennessee Tech would be forced to punt. So for Western Illinois, this is their first offensive possession of the second half. The longest rush of the evening, Max Norris takes it around the edge, 45 yards. He had a whale of a game, 19 carries, 133 yards on yeah, the ground. He was a great player. He, he ran really hard, and that's what, you know, we, that's like Yeedy. He, he's a lot like Yeedy, but we didn't know nothing about him. He just showed up at the game and kicked our butt. But a big stop there by Elliott Norman. He had a career-high 18 tackles. It holds him to a field goal. It's 13-0 at this point. But right back, the defense was forced to be on the field. This one in for six. Jalen Acklin, a little bit later on in the third quarter, is 20 to nothing at this point. Yep, this is where the uh, the, the dam starts to break. Uh, you know, just they're making some good plays. They had it schemed up. Great run right there by Vic, a local kid. You know, anytime a kid from Cookville does well, we're happy. We're not hating on him. So. He's a heck of a player. He's going to have a good career. Yeah, the freshman Vic Johnson takes it in. 27 0. We go fourth quarter at this point. 34 0. But Tennessee Tech did show some fight. Of course, always nice to see Dante's Bird get involved. Andre Sale connects with him for 12 yards. Very next play, we see Sale with a deep ball. Darius Stafford catch. He's going places. A Golden Eagle touchdown. We know what Dante's Bird can bring to the table. How about Darius Stafford? Yeah, that was a great job. That was a good job by Andre the play before. He saw the press coverage and kind of looked at me and said, hey, Let's work a double move over there, and I just said, go ahead. At this point, it can't get worse, and it ended up being a touchdown. So here's a nice play by Jerome Reich, uh, getting his first touch of the night on a, you know, executing the pass route, catching the ball, and making something happen. Yeah, it's some big plays. You saw right, right there. And then the very next one, this is only a two-play drive that started on the nine. Rolls right, throws left. Dante's bird, you're going to see him make a nice move here. Spins, he's in. And, of course, it's tough to keep Dante's bird down all game. It is, and we were trying to get him the, you know, the ball a lot, and uh, they did a nice job rolling their coverage to him. We tried to move him around, but uh, they, they covered him up. But we got some balls to him late, which uh, he, he earned that with all his hard work and what he's done in the offseason. So that the final, 41-14 Western Illinois collects the victory. You see some of the, the stats for the game, and I'm sure Coach will be the first to point out the last two with rushing yards and turnovers being a big key. Yeah, I've never had zero yards rushing. That's uh, really, you know, there's no excuse for that. That's just, that's coaching, that's playing, that's everything. That If that happens uh, again in the next 10 years, I don't know if I'll make it through another game. Well, we discussed Stafford, talked a little bit about Norman. How about Andre Sale? I know the redshirt freshman, his first action in the collegiate game, 233 pass yards and a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, he did well, and I, I like the fact that he tried to take all the blame uh, in the press conference. He tried to, you know, he tried to take everything, and that's that's a sign of a winner and a sign of a leader. And it's the reason these kids they play really, really hard for Andre. You know, we bring in transfers and stuff and try to get Andre beat out, and he just kept working and fighting and, and got the starting spot and. 
I'm really proud of Andre and what he's done to this point. I hopefully, you know, I know he'll get better and get better and get better. So, I mean, he's a freshman. We're going to have him around here for a while. Golden Eagles started off their season this past Thursday night. We knew Jacksonville State started their season a little bit previously. Let's take a look at what the rest of the OVC schools did. This now will be the OVC scoreboard. That is brought to you by the Golden Eagle Golf Club. Just told you, Jacksonville State, a 27-13 win over Chattanooga the previous Saturday. Thursday night action, the first two are against Division II schools. UT Martin defeats Clarion 36-0. Murray State over Kentucky Wesleyan 67-7. The next two you see against FBS schools. Austin P fighting tooth and nail with Cincy. It was a six-point game a little over five minutes to go, fourth quarter. Tennessee State, a 17-10 win. The Tigers' defense forced four turnovers as they knock off an FBS school in Georgia State. Probably the game of the weekend, EIU Indiana State. The Panthers scored with just three seconds left to win that game. Final two Saturday contests, Kansas defeats SEMO. 38-16, to and then Western Kentucky was close early on. 17 points scored in the second quarter by Western Kentucky. They ultimately defeat the Colonels of EKU 31-17. to Coach, anything as you look at that jump out at you for the first week of action? It's a big win by Tennessee State, you know, going to Georgia State, opening up uh, the, you know, the old Braves Stadium for the first time as a football facility for them. Uh, I watched a little bit of the Kansas Southeast Missouri game. They competed really well. I really like how Southeast Missouri plays. Uh, I really respect their coaching staff, Eastern Kentucky as well. Just very disciplined football team, and uh, those those guys were fun to watch. And you know Healy at Austin P. It's amazing what he's doing, and yeah. he's doing a really nice job. And he's going to break through, and hopefully he gets some wins this year, but not against us. There you go. Well, it's time to. Take a look at the OVC standings, and you're not going to see a whole lot. A couple of 1-0s, a couple of 0-1s, but most importantly, the calm on the left. Right now, everybody's deadlocked at 0-0. No question. And, uh, you know, we've got – that's the great thing about our schedule. We've got the first three weeks of non-conference play where we can continue to improve. And when we get ready for conference play, hopefully we will learn from all of our adversities and be ready to go. Well, the Golden Eagles, their first matchup – against an OVC school, as we just noted, with Eastern Kentucky and a tough loss to Western Kentucky, an FBS opponent. Tennessee Tech is going to take on Kennesaw State. They're going to then take on Ball State. And then a little bit later on in the month of September, it'll be a trip to Richmond, Kentucky, to face the Colonels. We still have much more on the Marcus Satterfield Show. The player profile, we'll take a look at a Golden Eagle practice with Mike Duff. And, of course, a little bit later on, we will preview that matchup with Kennesaw State. Lots to get to right here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. What are you looking for? A place to belong? A path to a career? A way to make things better? Do you wonder what opportunity looks like? Explore your answers here. Change your world at Tennessee Tech University. Visit tntech.edu slash change. Oh, one hit high and deep. Back of the end zone. Brown got it. Four drives inside. Put it up. See this one swung and missed it. Now Smith again. Block point tech. Nice turnaround by Johnson. Near post. Kick in. Any place. Anytime. Find it here, the OBC Digital Network. Back here on the Marcus Satterfield Show, presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Well, every football player's got a story, and here on the Marcus Satterfield Show, we try to get to you as many as we can their stories. Last weekend, one of the leaders on offense, Dantes Burt, a single-digit guy. This show, we will bring you one of the leaders defensively for Tennessee Tech. Without further ado, let's take a look at the player profile for this week. And that is brought to you by the OVC Digital Network. My name is Michael Kane. I play defensive tackle. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I enjoy being here because I'm away from home. And I know I can always go home and my family can always come visit me up here if they need to. I just graduated in May with my fitness and wellness degree. And after football, I plan to uh, do what I can, be a personal trainer, and start my own gym and try to go nationwide with it. The most influential in my life is my parents. They push me and make sure I do everything right and just push me to be different from everybody else I've been around.
my biggest obstacle was losing weight to make myself better for the team because sometimes you just want to eat when you can't and eating right is the hardest part of it. Coach Stat has came to make a big difference in the team. Like everybody works harder, everybody has the same goal, nobody's selfish. It's just all around completely different. A whole 360. The best advice I would give a high school guy or anybody that's coming to college, just come to work, don't give in, whatever it is, just get it done. I feel like the teams, we're going to have a great impact in OVC. I mean, you look at that segment, the player profile, it's just hard to not really like Mike Kane. Yeah, he's a great, great, great young man. He's, he's already got his degree. He's a single digit for the second year in a row. Uh, he's a leader on our team. Uh, he's not a vocal leader, but I think guys just see how hard he works and how hard he plays, and, and they respond to him doing things the right way. But, you know, since day one, he's been a pleasure to be around. He's bought into how we do things. and. Uh, I hope he has a great, great, great season this season to go out on because he's, he's earned it and deserves it. And earning and deserving as Dantes Bird last week, back-to-back -back years as a single digit. I have to say that that says a lot about Mike Kane that his teammates for two years in a row making him a single right, digit. Right, that's not the coaches giving mm -hmm. it to him. That's the, the players that, that see him work and see him, how he uh, communicates with them and what kind of teammate he is and is he tough, is he not tough. Uh, that's a result of, of him doing things the right way and doing it the way that we want it done. Well, from a player's perspective to that of a coach's perspective, our next segment takes an in-depth look at a Tennessee Tech practice through the eyes of one of the Golden Eagle assistant coaches. So we will bring you right now, mic'd up, and that is brought to you by Pepsi. Let's have a day today, babe. Have a day. Mental, mental, right? Mental. You're good. I want you to get a little more tempo in yours, okay? So you're just getting used to that knee a little more, okay? Let's have a day today, three. Come on. Come on, Ant. How's your shoulder feeling, baby? Good. Are you ready? You loose? Yeah, I'm loose. Okay, so we'll go from the three to nine to 12, 25, and then 35. Left nine, left nine, left nine, left nine. Stout, get that ball wet. Hit her. Wet ball, let's go. Get that ball wet. Stout, get his hands too. Let's go. Fourth and five. Good. Good, good, good. Reload, 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 reload. Good. 35, 35, 35, 35, 35. Chest down, chest down. Chest over my knees. Stay off my bags. Stay off my bags. Hold on, Swice. Hold on, Swice. Guys, please stop hitting my bags. Please stop hitting my bags. That's better. That's better, Matt. That's better, Matt. Yep. Very nice. Nice. Nice tuck. Nice tuck. Do it again. Good. Good. I thought for sure you'd guess on that one. I thought for sure you'd guess. Very nice tuck. Yeah. I mean, if he kicks it to you right now and you don't have to run after it, catch the thing and get what you can. But if he's kicking, I got to run at it, throw it up so he can't tee off on you. That's, that one there is bad now. But it's better than being too sweet. <laughs> that was disgusting. What was it? <laughs> it was a string that just kept going. I just got white in now. Hmm? You're just going to point that out like that don't hurt my villain? <laughs> it's a glitter highlight. I'm getting old. It's embarrassing. I've got gray hairs everywhere. Hey, Eric, Eric, Eric. Don't just go running up there, okay? You got to see the what's happening here, too, because we got to have you over there in the, in the pit. So just shuffle in. Yeah, shuffle in, and if you see pullers going that way, you need to go with it, okay? Dante Wright, one of Marcus Satterfield's assistant coaches, 
And, and Coach, I know he played at Miami, Ohio. I've heard high school quarterback. He looks like he could still play a little bit. He can't, but he's <laughs> a, he's a, he does a really nice job. And uh, he's he was he's been a D coordinator already, and he's going to be a D coordinator again really really soon. And he's a he's a very talented up and coming coach, and we're very fortunate to have him here. And he's just like the kids. Like, he's so bought in with our process and how we do things. Like he loves it, and uh, he helps spread it, teach it, defend it, and. He's my golf partner in the off season and everything, so we're, we're going to keep him around as long as we can. He's a good dude. Uh, you already kind of took one shot about him playing. I've got to ask, you said golf partner. Who's better? Just, yeah, we'll <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> All right, there you go. Well, we still have much more to come. A couple more segments. We'll take a sneak peek at what else happened in the world of Golden Eagle Athletics. And at the end of the show, we're going to preview Tennessee Tech's matchup with Kennesaw State. So don't go anywhere right here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Back here again on the Marcus Satterfield Show, presented by IWC Cash and Carry. At this point in the program, it is time to take a look at what else happened with Golden Eagle Athletics. For a good football team, you got to be able to have depth. Here on the Marcus Satterfield Show, we've got some depth as well. So pinch hitting for Mark Wilson, we've got Tennessee Tech Sports Information Director Mike Lehman. He's going to bring you right now the Golden Eagle Update, and that is brought to you by TechSports.com. Thanks, Dylan. There was plenty going on with Golden Eagle Athletics this past week, starting with the volleyball team, who was up in Ohio for their first of three straight tournaments in the state of Ohio. They fell to Akron, LaSalle, and Loyola, Maryland, but they will return to the state of Ohio this weekend to face off against Wright State, Harvard, and West Virginia in another tournament. Soccer this weekend, unfortunately, was unable to participate in their first match of the weekend on Friday due to impending weather and faulty field conditions, but they were able to play on Sunday, defeating Georgia State for their third straight 1-0 victory, Kari Nerdeman posting her third straight shutout. The soccer team will hit the road to the state of Alabama this weekend, going to UAB on Friday and then going down to the University of Alabama on Sunday. The cross-country teams, both men and women, hosted the Golden Eagle Invitationals despite a plenty amount of rain at Ironwood Golf Course. Tennessee Tech men's cross-country team placed second in the event, but was headlined by Gilbert Boyd, the sophomore who won last year's Golden Eagle Invitational. Yes, that's right, he won it again this year. The women's team was headlined by Michaela Rennick, who placed fourth overall in the event. Tennessee Tech golf will get their season started off this week, taking part in the Golf Week Program Challenge in South Carolina starting Sunday and going on through Monday and Tuesday. That will cover both the men and women's teams and head coach Polk Brown. All right, out of boy Mike. He fills in for Mark Wilson. I know he might have a little Tom Brady, Drew Bledsoe thing developing there, Coach. I don't know. Wally Pip. They, Wally Pip, you with the yeah, baseball reference. Exactly. There you go. Well, from that, we had good success, Golden Eagle Cross Country. Got to ask you, were you ever much of a, of a runner? Do you ever do a lot of running? That's not your thing? <laughs> no. No. No, I, was, I, I ran to the golf course. That's about all I did. There you ran to the golf course. Yes. Well, right now we are going to run to the next segment. It is now time for this week's opponent as the Golden Eagle is going to take on Kennesaw State. So let's roll some of that <laughs> film with this week's opponent. That is brought to you by the Golden Eagle Golf Club. Well, Coach... Kennesaw State, your first road game of the season and the first Saturday night game of the season. How about the Owls? Good team. Uh, you know, they just started football a couple years ago. Uh, it's, a, it's a very vibrant neighborhood. You know, Kennesaw is humongous. they got a great stadium. they got a great campus. But that stadium, is it's hard to recruit against them. I mean, they've got the facilities and everything going in their direction. I think they won, they were, they won six games two years ago, and they were 8-3 and three last year. And I lost to some really good teams, Liberty, who just beat Baylor uh, Saturday night, and Charleston Southern, who you know has been really on a roll the last couple of years. But uh, they're going to be tough. Uh, Coach Bohannon, I remember Coach Bohannon. He was one of my favorite receivers when I was younger at Georgia because I thought, hey, I, if he can play, I can play, you know. And 
uh, I've followed him around. We've, we've coached against each other when he was at Georgia uh, Southern and I was at Chattanooga and he was at Navy and Georgia Tech and now he's got his own show here. So it's going to be a lot like playing Georgia Southern and playing uh, Georgia Tech and all those guys. So you're, not, you're going to have limited possessions because offensively they're going to run the football and they're going to milk the clock. And so if you're not executing on offense, then it could be a long night. So, you know, based on how we performed the other night on offense, uh, we've got to we've got to practice really well this week and put ourselves in a position to to move the ball and, and keep our defense off the field. Well, with playing on Thursday night like the Owls did, uh, I know a couple extra days to prepare, uh, a few more days going into Saturday's contest. Yeah, it's huge. And, and Coach Quinn does a nice job all through camp. We would work, uh, you know, ten to fifteen minutes a day on the option. And uh, coaches has faced it when he was at Western Carolina, you know, with Citadel and the Georgia Southerns and all those guys. So he's got a really good plan on how to attack it. And uh, so our guys, it, it wasn't the first time they'd seen it, you know, this weekend. So we, we got a little bit of a head start, and then we've got to have a great week. Anytime you play these guys, you're, you know, your scout teams and your young guys have got to do a great job trying to replicate the speed. But we'll do our best, but it's, it's going to come down to how well we prepare and how well we practice. I know that you're discussing that that gives the team an opportunity to bond, stay in a hotel. It obviously impacts the schedule a little bit more as well. Yeah, it's crucial. Like, I think it's great. Like, we're only at home seven or two of the first seven weeks, which a lot of people are looking at me like, how are you doing this? Like, it's perfect. We get to get away. We don't have to worry about if there's a thousand people in the stands or 10,000 people. We don't have to worry about distractions. We get to be by ourselves. We get to be focused on the game together. You know, we know where everybody is at all times. We get to eat the right meals. And so we're excited about getting on the road, getting together, refocusing, and, and again, seeing how well we can practice and prepare this week and, and go try to improve this weekend. Well, that's going to do it now. Coach, are you ready for next week? Same time, same place. We'll do it again? I will be right here. All right. Well, good luck on Saturday night. Thank you very much. That game is 6 o'clock Cookville Central start. It is 7 o'clock Eastern time. Remember, down in Kennesaw, Georgia, Golden Eagles, Owls. You can listen to that game, 98.5 KISS FM, and then you can read all about it afterwards with the Cookville Herald Citizen. For Coach Satterfield, my name is Dylan Bazzano. We say farewell here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash & Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash & Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash & Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050.